Hello everyone, welcome to MindBrain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mind Brain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics of psychology to neuroscience and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand a little bit more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today we'll talk about neurocognitive functions. I've made a brief video where I will describe the main neurocognitive functions that are studied in neuropsychology. But first, let's see the books that I recommend to you. The first is The Principles of Neuropsychology. The second is The Fundamentals of Human Neuropsychology. The third is The Neuropsychology Handbook. The fourth is The Handbook of Clinical Neuropsychology, second edition. The fifth is The Neuropsychological Assessment by Lezak. And the sixth is the clinical neuropsychology. So, now let's see what is neurocognitive functions. Neurocognitive functions are a diverse psychological process that rely on particular areas, neural pathways or cortical networks in the brain. These processes, these mental processes, may be viewed as the substrate of the brain's neurological matrix as a result of the interconnections at the cellular and the molecular level. Neurocognitive functions are essential in cognitive, emotional and social processing. Also, neurocognitive functions are extremely important in automatic and voluntary movements. So now let's see which functions are we talking about. Executive functions, which encompasses inhibition, updating, shifting, planning, decision-making, cognitive flexibility and so forth. Complex attention, which encompasses arousal, sustained, selective, alternate and divided attention. As you are seeing here, the neurocognitive process of attention is subdivided in several sub-processes. Memory and learning, which encompasses functions such as working memory, declarative memory, semantic memory and the process of recall and cued memory. Also, other neurocognitive functions are the domain of language and communication, which encompasses fluency and phonemics, expressive speaking, understanding and writing. This domain is typically associated with the domains of communication and language understanding, ok? So, another one, reasoning and speed of processing, which encompasses deductive thinking, inductive thinking, abstract and concrete thinking, ok? These functions are typically associated with psychopathology, namely in psychosis and schizophrenia, and this domain is very important when we are talking about thinking processes and judgment. Perceptual organization, which encompasses the visual and spatial constructive skills. This domain is a domain where we use several functions to build up the world that we are seeing, the world that we are hearing and the world that we are sensing. So, perceptual organization is a very important domain. Psychomotor functions, which includes praxis and gnosis, which are a, a set of functions that allows humans to have several movements psychologically motivated. Social cognition, which encompasses representation of the self and the others. Social cognition is also a domain studied in psychology and clinical psychology and psychotherapy, but here we are looking to this domain as a domain which have several neural bases, and this domain is also important in how we understand the others and how we represent our relationships in our mind. Also, I have had another domain called Neuropsychology of Personality, where I will talk about the neural basis of the self. Basically, I will describe some research focused on the neurobiological basis of the personality traits. And the last one, Neuropsychology of Emotions, which are mainly concerned about cognitive representation of emotions and the cognitive description of emotions, ok? So, these are the main neurocognitive functions that will be described in future videos, ok? So, here is a diagram that may help you to understand 
other uh, neurocognitive functions that were not described here. These neurocognitive domains was also described in the DSM-5. We can see the perceptomotor function, language, learning and memory, social cognition, complex attention, and executive functions. As you are seeing here, some of the neurocognitive processes are rearranged in a different manner. This is just a diagram that may help you to better understand and to categorize these neurocognitive functions, okay? So the following videos will be dedicated specifically to each neurocognitive domain. I will describe more deeply the specificities of each neurocognitive domain, okay? So stay tuned. Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description to see the books that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!